Hey guys, it's Wendy. Welcome. So uh, a few weeks ago, I made a really ugly card. Today, I've managed to make an ugly bunny. But everybody loves an ugly bunny. Even if it's ugly, it's still cute because it's a bunny. Before we start, I have some blog candy slash YouTube candy for you. I found all of these shimmer paints and they're not paints. They're embossing pastes and I'm never going to use them all. So I'm going to give them away. So if you live in the United States and you want to be included in this giveaway, please comment on my YouTube or my blog under this particular post and you will be entered to win and I will choose a winner next week and announce it. So actually I'll have four winners because there's four tubes of paste. So I'm adding pool party reinker to this paste and I am going to make clouds on my little gable box. These gable boxes are shimmery white and you can get them from Stampin' Up. Um, they are in the catalog, so that's awesome. And then this paste is also in the catalog if you want that. All the items are listed below the video. And um, so are the instructions. They're also listed over on my blog. So if you need the info from there, you can get it from there as well. So I'm only showing you one side of this box because I had to let it sit and dry for like an hour. And then I flipped the box over and I did the other side. So I felt like eh, you got the gist by seeing one side. You probably didn't need to see both sides. Um, blue painter's tape on the top and the bottom of the box where the box would fold. And then I'm taking my little trowel. I guess that's what, I don't know what these are called. Spatula, trowel, palette knife, whatever you want to call it. Potato, potato, right? Um, and I am going to smash the embossing paste across here and leave it a little bit bumpy. I don't want it super smooth. These are supposed to simulate clouds. Clouds are not perfectly smooth, so I am okay with it being bumpy. And then I needed to move over and do a little bit more embossing paste um, over here so that it wouldn't look like I had this big weird gap at the end of the box. And then I'll flip the box over and do the other side exactly the same way. But I'm gonna peel all this away so that you can see what I'm left with because it's really cute. FYI, when you're using embossing paste, you need to go wash it immediately. So I'm going to go wash it off the palette knives, off of the little pad that I was using, because if you don't, it, it it sticks and it gets hard and there's you'll never get it off. So FYI on that. So now I'm going to peel up my blue painter's tape and I'm left with this little line of adorable puffy clouds. And then I'm going to do the other side exactly the same way. And that preps my box. And then we're going to make a tag. So here we go. We're going to make the tag. And this is where the ugly bunny comes in. So I've got the scalloped tag topper punch. And I'm going to punch this piece of pool party. It is cut at um, three and a half inches by two inches. I'm going to use the detailed trio to round the corners at the bottom. And then I'm using the one and a half inch half inch and cookie cutter and the light bulb punches and I have to tell you I punched all this stuff and I kind of halfway assembled it and then I decided oh I'm gonna go ahead and just assemble it on the video I don't need to assemble it first mm, I should have assembled it first because then I would have known how creepy this bunny was gonna come together but whatever you'll see you'll see there's a tip that I need you to see is the Blushing Bride cardstock for the center of the ears. You're going to punch a full size bulb out with the Blushing Bride and then you're gonna half punch it. So it makes this little like, well, it's the center of an ear, people. It's the center of an ear. So now I'm gonna start assembling all of the pieces that I've already punched and we're gonna start story time. Probably hopping, ha ha ha, no pun intended, back and forth between the story and the project. Sorry about the lighting. I used natural light and unfortunately um, the sun was not out. It was actually overcast and overcast sometimes gives this very blown out look. So I don't know what to tell you. Hopefully it'll 
it'll even out here a little bit. So I'm adding adhesive to the ears and then the face to the ears. Okay, so if you watched my video on Monday, you know the story, the beginning of the story of the missing man. I don't have time to recap, so go back and watch that from Monday. It's the Easter Wishes uh, video with the all adorned stamp set. So that's part one. So we're going to pick up where I left off. So my friend starts noticing that there are dogs. Well, she knows that there's dogs that live in this house and there's nobody coming to take care of them. And so she starts calling animal control and the sheriff's department. And she's like, somebody needs to come take care of these dogs. They're in the house. They're barking. They haven't been fed and they're not nice dogs. Okay. There's like four of them. There's little bitty ones. There's a couple of pit bulls. Um, so, okay, let me back up. Prior to this happening, this is how she knows about the dogs and the status of the animals in the house. One day she comes home from somewhere with her kid and her child's 11, same age as my kid. And she comes home and this lady, this woman, whose father has been missing all this time, is outside and she's screaming and she's like, help me, my dog has my, and my friend thought she was saying my kid. And um, my friend said, then you need to call 911. Like, okay, so to back up a little, my friend is not a fan of this person because of all these things and my friend's totally suspicious that this person has killed her father. So, um, so anyway, she's like, call 911, you know, I can't help you. And she's like, no, my cat, my dogs have my cat. And my friend was like, I'm, I'm not helping you. I'm not getting in the middle of that. It could be dangerous. So this guy in the neighborhood hears what's happening and he goes up there and he goes to the house and he said when he, he told my friend later when he walked in, okay, FYI, it's going to get graphic here. The cat had been destroyed by the dogs. I mean, mutilated basically. And all the while this woman's two year old child is standing in the corner of the room watching it all happen. Can you imagine you guys? My good Lord. See my creepy bunny? Told you. He's creepy. Super creepy. Okay, so I'm going to add him to the tag. So anyway, he um, he tells my friend this and she's like, oh my God, I can't believe that she would have the child in the house, like not get the child out of the house because what if the dogs would have turned on the child? So that had happened. So my friend knew there were animals in the house, blah, 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 blah. So she's called animal control. She's called the police department. Nobody's doing anything. They keep saying that they can't just go in and take people's animals. There has to be all these incidences, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's what it boils down to is everybody's afraid of being sued these days, right? So even the police who should be able to do what they need to do in a situation like this can't do it because they have to be careful. So anyway, she eventually they come and get the animals, but that's down the road. I'm going to tell you that. So during all of this, now mind you, this man has been missing since August and we are now in March. So apparently um, there are these people that show up at this house after this man is missing and the daughter's still living there and she's coming and going, blah, blah, blah. And it's starting to show, she's starting to be suspicious because there's stories that are being told that aren't true. She'll say she was one place and she was actually somewhere else. And here's the kicker. The man's veterans benefits that he received got changed into her name, y'all, and she's the one collecting the benefits. Uh, can we say motivation? That is like total motive for killing him. Then it comes to find out that he had told her that she could no longer live in the house and she needed to move out because it was like her and her four kids and her boyfriend and all their animals. And he was like, I can't have you all living here anymore. You can live here with your kids, but I can't have the boyfriend and all the animals. So 
motive number two, right? He's asked him to leave. Now she's getting his benefits. It's kind of like open and shut at this point, right? Are you not thinking that with me? That's how I'm feeling. Anyway, so she um, ends up having all these different stories. Well, randomly one day, and this is a few months back, these random people show up at their house and start living there. And so my friend starts inquiring about these people and may or may not have done a little Facebook looking, just going to say, and finds information out on a Facebook page that this man has basically admitted to hurting a man, but it doesn't give any other details. Okay, that's it. We're at the end of the video. (laughs) So now you have to come back. Friday for the rest of this story. Oh my gosh, I know you guys are going to be so mad at me. Click on either one of the images that you see here to watch the videos. Click on the circle with the uh, my face in it to subscribe. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.